you need to love pain to be an athlete. I suffered of a Achilles problem for more than 10 years, both sides. So I was in pain every morning. Pain was never going away, both sides, both of my Achilles. Sometimes I felt a bit better, sometimes no, but every morning I was in pain, afternoon, night for 10 years. And I know no pain, no this, whatever, all the, you know, the, Correct. oh my, no, this is real. You need to love pain. So yeah, as we can see there, Thierry's pain in a picture where if you're an athlete, you should be in pain where I personally think if you're in the right training system, this, this shouldn't be occurring. I personally went through this when I was younger. I would just play all the time, trying to get better at football, doing all this stuff, push through any kind of pain, knee pain, ankle pain, stuff like that. And it would only make it worse. And it wasn't until I fixed those and made, as you, as I'll sh show in this slide, made the load be able to be handled by my knee, by my Achilles and this kind of stuff that I no longer got any pain when I was going to play the football, was doing my sport and everything like that. So right now I'm going to show you how Thierry Henry could have fixed these Achilles problems. Obviously they've been on for 10 years now, so it's going to be a much harder job than it would have been if he would have tried to first fix this when it started. But this is how I would go about addressing his Achilles. So why is this happening? Mm we see a lot of Achilles problems nowadays. And one of the main reasons is that the soleus is undeveloped. So the soleus can be targeted in Bentley car phrases, KOT car phrases, stuff like this. And we're not really doing that too much. We're, we're mainly doing straight leg car phrases. And even we're not even doing that many car phrases in general, to be honest. When when we do do lower leg stuff, it is straight leg car phrases, not KOT car phrases or tip braids or anything like that. But even then, people don't really focus on, on lower leg stuff. They they maybe put them at the end of the workout and they forget them every so often. Like they just go, oh, as long as I'm doing my heavy squats, as long as I'm getting all that force, being able to produce. But it's, it's not like that. Like in ATG, we like to say build from the ground up and, and this is what we need to do. And another big factor is poor ankle mobility. So if that ankle is very stiff is very unmobile then it's gonna it's gonna the achilles is gonna snap easier because it when it goes into those long ranges to push off push off the ground then it it's not gonna be able to have that extra range and it's gonna snap so if you're pushing off like this and it goes to here a little bit too much for too much farther than what it can actually handle um, then it, it's going to snap easier. Also, poor footwear. Over the years, our shoes have become more and more less foot shaped, and especially football boots. Obviously, I, after my knee injury, I came back to football and stuff like that, and I was used to wearing barefoot um, shoes, uncivilized sneakers, stuff like this. And I went back to wearing football boots, and my feet absolutely killed. They literally jam you in there. They're so poorly designed. Someone needs to come out and make some. Mate, I might make that a business idea. No one steal that. Um, I'll make some foot foot designed um, football boots. But yeah, another main reason is that when we're producing too much force that we can't absorb. So with Ter Thierry Henry, he's one of the fastest players to have ever lived. And because he's that fast, he's producing so much force. And his ability to absorb that isn't there. There's too much load for the Achilles to handle, which is why he's getting these problems. So what can we do about this? So the whole goal of rehab, and even if you aren't in the rehab stage, if you're just looking to build um, your Achilles tendon strength, this kind of stuff, is that we want the capacity to exceed the load. When we get injured, it's usually that the load is exceeding the capacity. So the load means how much you're sprinting, how much you're jumping, how much you're running, how much weight's going on onto the Achilles, stuff like that. And the capacity is basically how much it can recover and adapt. So if you're putting too much... Um, if you're sprinting too much and your Achilles can't actually recover and adapt from that, it's going to hurt because next time you go and it's going to get worse and worse and worse, the more you do it because it's not going to be able to recover. Then you go more and then not going to be able to recover, go more. And then it, it's just leading to bad stuff. So we actually want to make it so that the capacity now exceeds the load rather than the other way around. And how can we do that? So these are the four steps plus a little bonus. Um, first is short range. Second is mid to long range. And then third, strength in all areas of the foot. Fourth, stretches and ankle mobility. And the bonus is foot health. I think about most injuries, thanks to Keegan and my mentors, Ben, and all these kind of stuff who talk about short range, mid range, long range. I think about injuries, pretty much every injury in this way now. 
and it, it's a blessing. So the short, if no one's ever heard of short range, mid range, long range concepts, <laughs> you need to watch deeper videos on them because it's very hard to explain in such a short sh setting. But what you need to know is that short range promotes healing, mid and long range are more structural adaptations and bulletproofing over time. So, which is why the step one is short range and then step two is mid to long range. So we're going from the healing aspect of it to the actual like restructuring of the tendons of the muscles of the ligaments, this kind of stuff. So yeah, let's go on step one. So, sorry, something I forgot to mention is that when we are doing these exercises, we want to be keeping the symptoms at a point where we can recover from them so we're not causing too much pain obviously our whole thing at atg is pain free training so if you go into this and you can't do certain exercises without it flaring up in the session after the session and the days after the session then you need to regress um but the first thing is blood flow so we can get this in many ways but it's a short range concept so it can be done in backward sled pushing the sled not massively it's going to very, very help with the foot strength. Maybe it is a little short range, to be honest. So pushing and pulling the sled, but I like this to start with when your Achilles is very painful. So just turning off a treadmill, 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 and just pushing through the toes, the big toes, getting strength, getting that short range exercise through there. And then also decline calf raises if these hurt or even if they don't hurt. Getting loads and loads and loads of blood flow to the area loads of heat because that's that's what the body likes to restructure the tendons and stuff like that um you can think about tendons like metal so if you were to heat up metal and then try and bend it, it's going to bend a lot easier so if it was like i mean obviously you need loads and loads and loads of strength depending on the size of the metal but if it was cold it'd be easier to snap and if it was warm it would be easier to mold and tendons are kind of the same so we want to get as much blood flow as we can get as much heat to the area get as much this and then go into actually changing it the structures with the mid-range and, and long-range stuff so yeah first backward sled backwards walking decline calf raises and heat so heat packs epsom salt hot hot baths even like those foot bath things um but these are all the stuff we want to be hitting straight away getting that healing to the area and then from there we want to progress to mid and then eventually long range depending on how bad it is um how, this this can take this process can take quite a while depending on how bad the achilles strain is how long you've had it that kind of stuff but the mid range would be the flat ground calf raises so no slab board so before we were on the decline slab board you see how that's only a shorter movement there at the top so it'd be like this and then when you get to the flat ground it's more mid range so it's like that and then when you get to long range there's stretch under the the calf under the achilles and that kind of stuff and then you're pushing all the way through so it just gets more and more intense as you go up the ranges but yeah once you can feel good with the short range everything feeling good we can then progress to mid range and this can be done just off the flat ground and then after that progressing to long range so in then going on to incline slant calf raises getting that proper stretch at the bottom you see how this angle is up like that i just clicked off the slide but yeah and then kot calf raise after that also long range also hitting the deep soleus getting that a lot stronger so you see the angle of my knee and my ankle here we're getting deep stretch in here it's long range exercise and then fhl calf raises again at the bottom we're getting that big stretch the knees over the toes and we're pushing up through it um strengthening both the calves there so after that, we want to build strength in all areas of the foot. The soleus is a massive one. So we want to go from short, mid range, long range in the soleus, but we just want to build total strength in the foot as well. Um, it can be simple as um, just doing the, the bent knee calf raise and stuff like that for some people, but it, it's always good to be balanced, especially when we're playing sports and the tibs are so important for decelerating, taking pressure off certain stuff. So yeah, we want to be doing straight and bent knee calf raises, as I, as I showed in the previous slide. So the KOT calf raises, FHL calf raises, or even just a standing up straight calf raise, hitting all angles there. So we hit the soleus, we hit the gastroc, um, and then the tib raises on the other side. This can be training the muscle in the shin, well, in front of the shin. This can help a lot with shin splints, knee pain, everything, because that is going to absorb for force when you're decelerating, when you're jumping, doing that kind of stuff. We then want to move on to ankle eversion, inversion. This kind of stuff is more advanced, but you can see here how your the, the ankle doesn't just move 
forwards and backwards, it can also move side to side. So inversion, e versions, and then balance poles. I'm not really sh too sure what these are called. Actually, so I just call them balance poles because they look like balance poles. But you can see here how this is going to be getting deep into all the muscles in the foot. There's so many muscles and bones in the foot. And when you have your shoes off and you're really getting into um, these balance poles like this and standing on them, that's going to be really shankling all the muscles in the foot. You can even look at doing calf raises and stuff on there. And then the stretches and ankle mobility are also a big part. So to fix this, slant calf stretch, cow stretch, tib stretch, dumbbell elevated front foot stretch, Patrick step up, AC split squat, and seated calf pauses. This is what basically fixed my ankle mobility. I had absolutely awful ankle mobility when I came back from my knee, knee injury on my left side. My right side was absolutely fine, but when you have an injury in one place it usually goes up or down the chain so my knee was really really messed up so because i wasn't doing loads of stuff on that side my ankle then started to seize up so i had to really work on this kind of stuff um so the slant calf stretch you can see here um where you're just having a slant board you can use a plate you can use a kettlebell anything that lifts the front toes up and then just leaning forward getting your hips down into it and really feeling the stretch in the gastric to start with then eventually once your gastroc starts getting looser and everything like that it will then feel more in the achilles the cow stretch is this one you can call it cow stretch you can call it big pit a big toe stretch but um gets more strength through the big toe and the plantar fascia, uh, fascia and can really stretch it out. That, that's a big one that helped me get rid of my, I used to have pain on top of my foot. The tip stretch and, and the plantar fascia stretch there really, really help with that. And big toe is just important for, for a lot of stuff, for acceleration, for jumping. If you've got stronger big toes, then it, it, it's going to be, you're going to be faster. You're going to jump higher. It's going to be all round better for athleticism. So yeah, then we have the tip stretch, which is just stretching out the top of the foot. You can lean, oh, sorry. You can lean further back here to get more of the stretch on here. And then obviously also lift yourself up and really push into those tips um, once it gets more advanced. Um, and then the dumbbell elevated front foot stretch, haven't got a picture of this one, but if you know the HG split squat, what you can do is just put your front foot up on the thing. Don't worry about your back leg, put a dumbbell on top of your knee and push your knee forward and you're going to feel the stretch so much in your Achilles and this kind of stuff. Stressing again, don't do any of this with pain. Don't push through it so far that you then hurt your Achilles again. We want to be doing this slowly over time. Tendons take longer to adapt than muscles so take your time with this kind of stuff do all the healing stuff before it get loads of blood flow get loads of heat in the area and then go on to the stretches and the long range stuff um so yeah and then stuff that really helped me with my ankle mobility as well is patrick step ups atg split squats and seated calf raises with a pause at the bottom all just long range exercises stretch strength absolutely beautiful for all kinds of stuff mobility um and then a bit of a bonus is just foot health in general. We want to be wearing better shoes. Our shoes are awful nowadays. So I personally have uncivilized sneakers because obviously Big Ben Patrick fan, Big ATG fan, ATG coach. So yeah, Vivo also very good. I've seen a lot of people rave about them. And then also you can go for uh, for toe spaces. I've seen a lot of people talk about um, the toe spaces. I've seen, even seen some shoes which are like kind of toe spaces at the same time. They look a bit weird, but... I might try them out. I might get a few funny looks in the gym, but it'd be pretty cool. And then, yeah, further, if you want to go deeper on, on foot health and this kind of stuff, the Foot Collective is an amazing source. They've done a podcast with um, ATG Lot. Barefoot Sprinter, Keegan's um, mentored him for a bit, and he has some very, very good stuff. He has a program on, on foot stuff. And then Matthew Scar, he has a lot of ankle stuff, which obviously is also um, helping with your foot health and that kind of stuff. He likes the spring ankle stuff, if anyone's seen those more isometric stuff and then obviously once you've done all this and you've built the strength what you want to do after that which is something i haven't mentioned is then reintroduce um pliers and stuff like that i'm more of a strength strength coach so i just think about getting people strong but then you want to once you have built up strength you want to test certain stuff so you want to test plyometrics you want to then test playing um football you want to test sprinting you want to test these stuffs and then build those up progressive overload in the same way that you would without any strength exercise you wouldn't just go straight into sprinting just like you wouldn't go straight into a 15 inch step up because your knee's going to explode same thing you want to take your time getting back to certain areas especially if, if sprinting is how you've done your achilles in the first place you can't just 
um, feel think, okay, I've built all this strength, so then I can just go straight into sprinting. It, it's going to help a lot, especially in the long run, but you want to do a mix of both once you have the, the uh, Achilles feeling better, the ankles feeling better, feeling very strong. You want to then reintroduce the stuff slowly. Um, but yeah, that is how I would fix Thierry Henry's um, ankle. But but yeah, it, it is very sad and it's a very common injury nowadays. And, and most of the reason is that we're not building from the ground up anymore. A lot of this can be prevented if we were to do all of the tib raises, all the backward sled, building foot strength, like everything I've said in this video, if we were to do all this um, in the first place, we wouldn't have all these Achilles problems. We wouldn't have the knee problems. We wouldn't have this stuff. We build. We want to build from the ground up instead of the traditional training, which is trap bar deadlift, building loads of strength in the hips, um, producing force, producing force. We just we want to balance it out. We want to do ankle extension, ankle flexion, knee extension, knee flexion, hip extension, hip flexion. Balance it out. Make sure you can absorb the same amount of force that you're producing. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'm loving these YouTube videos at the moment. I get to actually explain stuff a lot more, go more in depth, allows me to work on my speaking. So drop in the comments any other um, videos you'd like to see. I'd love to do topics on all all sorts of stuff, but I'm going for maybe one one YouTube video a day. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> maybe I'll lose my motivation at some point. But yeah, thanks for watching.